So children, today we will learn about pressure in fluids. First of all, you should know what is a fluid. Anything which can flow is called as a fluid. Liquids and gases both are called as fluids. So, <clears throat> we have done yesterday that pressure is equal to thrust by area. This thrust is also called as force. Thrust per unit area is called as pressure. Now in case of liquids, pressure depends upon three factors. Pressure in liquids depends upon three factors. What are they? First, it depends upon the depth from the free surface of the liquid. Second, it depends upon the density of the liquid. And third, it depends upon acceleration due to gravity. So, remember, pressure in liquids is given by the formula P equal to H rho G where H is the depth from the free surface of the liquid rho this is called as rho pronounced as rho this is the density of the liquid and G is the acceleration due to gravity. P is equal to H rho G where H is the depth of the point from the free surface of the liquid. Rho is the density of the liquid and G is acceleration due to gravity of earth. Now as the depth increases from the free surface, pressure will also increase. If the depth is less from the free surface, pressure will decrease. If the density of the liquid increases for a particular point, for a particular depth inside the liquid, then the pressure will also increase. And lastly, acceleration due to gravity G. So, you must remember that pressure in liquid depends upon three factors that is depth from the free surface of the liquid density of the liquid and acceleration due to gravity now here also the SI range of pressure remains same it is Newton per meter square or Pascal clear now pressure in liquids has some practical application in our day-to-day -day life. For example, all of you definitely has the experience, all of you have the experience of um, drinking 
cold drink from a bottle with the help of a straw. So whenever you are putting the straw in your mouth and you suck something, what are you actually sucking? Most of the students will say that sir we are sucking the cold drink. Now here you go wrong. It is not so. Actually you are sucking the air out of it and due to atmospheric pressure which is applied on the free surface of the liquid, the liquid rises in your mouth. Now liquid pressure is measured with the help of an instrument called as manometer, remember. Now, whenever we are speaking of pressure in liquids, you must know about some laws which govern the pressure in liquids. So, let us go through the laws of liquid pressure. So, children, here are the laws of liquid pressure. First, pressure is same in all directions about a point in a liquid. Now, if you think of a vessel containing water, then in all directions about a point, suppose a point is over here, then from all direction, pressure at this point is same. Clear? In a stationary liquid, second point, in a stationary liquid, pressure is same at all points on the horizontal plane. Now think of another point on the same horizontal surface. Here also, pressure at this point will be same from all sides. Right? Pressure at a point inside a liquid increases with depth from its free surface. Now supposing if you think of pressure acting at point A and pressure acting at point B. Since this height is less than this height, So pressure at point A will be much less than the pressure at point B. So pressure at a point inside a liquid increases with depth from its free surface. Pressure at same depth is different in different liquids. That means what? It increases with the increase in density of liquid. Supposing here the liquid taken is kerosene. Then density at this point whatever is the value of pressure when kerosene is there, then that value will change in place of kerosene if you replace it with water because density of water is more than kerosene. So for the same point, at the same level, the pressure in water will be more than that in kerosene. And lastly, a liquid seeks its own level. Means whatever may be the form of um, container, circular, conical, rectangular, tubular, anything, spherical. If water is allowed to pour inside each of the container at the same time, you will find after stopping the source of water, the level of water in all these containers will be same. That means the liquid will seek its own level. So remember, now let me give you one example. All of you know what is a dam. Right? A dam is constructed across a river so that water, the flow of water can be stopped on one side of the dam. Now the base of the dam is made very, very, very wide. What is the reason? Because as water will be collected on one side, the level of water will keep on increasing on one side of the dam. So at the bottom, due to increase in depth, 
excess amount of pressure will be exerted on the wall of the dam. That is why the base of the dam is made very very thick in comparison to the top portion. If you see at the cross section of a dam, it will be more or less like this way. So, see here, this is the depth, here it has become wide, here water is there. So, the base of this is the dam, the base of the dam is made very very wide so as to reduce the effect of pressure of water at the depth. So children, many numericals are there which we will deal when we, were, we go through our regular classes. For the time being, you can practice the numericals both in pressure due to solid and pressure in due to liquid that is given in your book. Okay. So in the next class, we will do pressure due to air. Okay. So till then, you please go through your book nicely and read up to dot. Thank you.